king of kings, immortal, invisible, the only wise God, is to you that we have gathered today. And we ask that you have your way in the midst of your people today, as many as are joining this service uh, virtually from everywhere. We ask that your hand rest upon everyone in the name of the Lord Jesus. Uh, we pray your blessing over every home, over every life, all around Africa, from the United Kingdom, from from, from uh, North America, from Canada, from the GTA, uh, from, from the UAE, from, you know, from Australia, wherever people are joining this service from today, we ask for a release of your grace and your blessing over everyone. We ask that you charge your word with power. Let it minister grace to every hearer. Let no one be the same again. We thank you for bringing us into a new month, the month of February, and we receive uh, your blessing over everyone this month of February. We thank you for the blessing of new beginning. Have your way in our lives today. Holy Spirit, we invite your presence. We thank you for leading, for guiding us all through the month of January. Thank you for the benefit of seeing another month of the year 2021. As we give you praise today, we ask that you accept our thanksgiving. Thank you, everlasting Father. Have your way in this service. Heal, set free, deliver, empower, and energize our soul and our spirit for divine accomplishments in the month of February. Thank you, everlasting Father, in Jesus' precious name. And everyone says a believing amen. Praise God. Thank you for joining us today. Uh, it's a good, good, good time to be alive, and it's a powerful experience seeing the month of February, the month of love. And I pray that the love of God shall be shed abroad in your heart afresh this month, in the precious name of Jesus. Uh, I, I welcome everyone. Please uh, call friends and family. Put them together if you're in the, in the house, if you're at work, wherever you are joining the service. Make sure uh, that you're calling on someone to be a part of this experience uh, with you. And uh, all through the month of January, we had very fantastic messages that I want to encourage you to get on the YouTube channel, subscribe, and watch over and again. Uh, get on our main website, elevationng.org, and um, also, uh, uh, partake of, of, of some of the resource there. If you go to the resource uh, uh, center there, you'll be able to get a lot of these materials that you can watch and listen over and again. But get on the YouTube channel and make sure you watch again and again as well. Praise God. All right, I, I love to pray for everyone celebrating birthdays and wedding anniversaries and special days in the month of February. All the February babies, it's time to gather together, gather, gather, gather in the chat room, gather in the comment segment, everywhere. Just gather together. Let's celebrate with you and let's pray for you. Everyone uh, who is also celebrating wedding anniversary, job anniversary, I'd love to pray for you at this time, if you don't mind. Can you just join me? If you can stand, stand. If it's, con if it's convenient for you to stand. If not, just sit and bow down your heads and let's pray together. Our Father, we thank you for everyone celebrating wedding anniversaries, birthdays, job anniversary, business anniversary, or for kids also celebrating, I mean, birthdays in the month of February. Father, we ask for a release of your blessing over them. But thank you for bringing them into a new year uh, and into the month of their birth. Lord, we receive your blessing over them. We decree and declare that you satisfy them with long life. They will not be cut short in their prime. Your hand will continually rest upon them. They enjoy consistent open heaven. We thank you for a fresh infilling of the Holy Spirit in the life of everyone. Thank you for divine guidance. They will not miss their steps in the name of the Lord Jesus. Your light will shine upon their path brighter and brighter. And this year, uh, they will experience many new testimonies in the name of Jesus. As many as are trusting you for special birthday gifts, special anniversary gift of restoration, of divine turnaround, of restoration of joy and peace, uh, of specific needs, we join our faith with theirs today, and we decree that there's a divine supply in the name of the Lord Jesus. Thank you, Father. Uh, take all the glory in Jesus' precious name. Amen. Praise God. Praise God. Praise God. Praise God. Uh, and if you're blessed today, celebrate Jesus with me uh, with a virtual hand clap or whatever kind of uh, uh, way you want to celebrate. Please go ahead and, and, and celebrate. Praise God. Praise God. We start a new series of teachings today. Uh, that we have tagged, come aboard, powered by love. It's a month of February, and it's the month of love. And uh, I needed to understand one thing, that uh, God uh, wants to uh, 
uh, wants you to experience his love in a new dimension this new month. Uh, so so I'm, I'm, I'm inviting everyone to come aboard and, uh, you know, because we're powered by love. And this first message of this new teaching series, Powered by Love, uh, I've, I've, I've titled this, The Vehicle Created for Connection. Created for Connection. All through this month, uh, messages will, will, you know, will layer after one another. Uh, the vehicle, uh, the, the, you know, those of us in the vehicle, uh, and our vehicle being powered by love, we're going on a journey together and how we connect, how we do life together, how you know, we, 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 we walk with one another and walk with God, and how uh, the church of God becomes a, a very vital part of that which God wants to do in your life and my life, and how each and every one of us uh, will also function this, this, this season as we connect with one another to do the will of God together. Uh, so created for connection, the vehicle. We're created for connection. Uh, that's, that's the title of this message. And I'd like to read from, uh, from the book of Psalms, Psalm 133. Uh, I, I read from, from verse 1 to 3. Psalm 133 from verse 1 to 3. It says, how wonderful. I'm reading from the New Living Translation. The New Living Translation, Psalm 133 from verse 1 to 3. Or just three verses in that passage of the scripture. It says, how wonderful. How pleasant. It is when brothers live together in harmony. Now, there's a comparison here. And, you know, the writer of this, this psalm, this was a psalm of David. He was using the elements, the natural elements of those days to describe the beauty of connection, the beauty of goodness, uh, of the goodness of connection. He said, how wonderful, how pleasant uh, it is when brothers live together in harmony. He said, for harmony is as precious as the anointing oil that was poured over Aaron's head that ran down his bed and onto the border of his rope. Harmony is as refreshing as the dew from Mount Hammon that falls on the mountains of Zion. These are locations in the day of David. And the natural occurrences, you know, when a dew just falls upon the, 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 the mountain and it flows down, you know, like a cascade of water just flowing down. It was just describing the effect of unity and connection with the natural things around him then. The, the, the fact that, uh, you know, connection uh, and unity brings an empowerment. It, it describes it like the anointing hall, uh, the anointing is a divine empowerment to succeed, to prosper, and to live good, and to fulfill destiny. It says this thing is like that empowerment. And it says when we connect, when we're united, then it's like an empowerment that flows through not just the people on the top, which is the head of Aaron, not just the people around, you know, uh, the senior management, if it's uh, an organization or a body, but it flows down even to the beard and to the, to, to the hem of his garment. It flows to everyone. When there's a connection and a strong you know, sense of unity within a family, you see the blessedness or the blessing of God on the leader of the home. You see it on the, the, you know, uh, the parent. You see it on the children. You see it on the grandchildren. When there's unity, that's how it is. Whether it's an enterprise, whether it's a church, whether it's a community, whether it's a city, you see the same thing. That, that's what uh, David here was describing through this psalm. Uh, I have been a product of connections. My life has been a product of connections. You know, all kinds of connections uh, from while I was young. I mean, when I was still very young till this time, God has given me the grace and the opportunity to connect with all kinds of people. And who I am today uh, uh, is like a, a, a picture of the different kind of connections that God has brought into my life. So, it's important to note that being involved in a life-giving, vital community is critical to living a meaningful and impactful life. Yeah, you know, that, that's the metaphor for, for the vehicle that I was talking about. Being involved in a life-giving, vital community is, is very critical to 
they, uh, you know, to, to live in a meaningful and impactful life. Many people want to live a meaningful and impactful life. You know, as we go into the month of February, people will be celebrating love and connection and all that. And sometimes we're too, too, you know, too pedestrian about it. We celebrate the ephemeral things, you know, the mundane things, the real heart to heart connection that is needful for living an impactful life. Many people gloss over it. So you can't say you have this critical connection and that critical connection, this valuable connection, everything is just superficial. But what God has in mind, metaphorically, is all of us coming into a vehicle, coming aboard, you know, and we're, this vehicle is powered by the love of God that is in Christ Jesus. Say amen, somebody. Yeah, that, and that vehicle starts to take us in the direction of our destiny together. That is the, 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 the reason for the church. That is the reason for the family. That is the reason for a community. That is the reason for a nation. So your journey through life is as important as who you go with. Can I say that one more time? Your journey through life is as important as who you go with. So your friends matter. Your network matters. Yeah, your network matters. Your church matters. Yeah, every connection that you allow into your life, they all matter. Very, very important. Yeah, very, very important. When we see the description of the early church in Acts chapter 2, Acts chapter 4, we will see that the, the, the importance of connection, the importance of the, the fact that who you go with in life really matters to the outcome of your destiny and that God wants us to engage vital connection in a, a faith community, in a life-giving community that can lead us into what he has proposed for us. Starting from Acts chapter 2, if we examine God's original intention, if you want to know God's original intention, uh, you go to, for instance, Genesis uh, chapter 1, you know, uh, you see God saying it's not good that man be alone. Genesis 1, 2, and 3, you see God's original intention. If you want to see God's, or, I mean, God's original intention for man, you know, that he created, for man and woman that he created. So that's why a lot of the time we teach marriage from there, we teach family from there, and all that. The same way, when you want to see God's original intention for his church and the faith community, go to Acts of the Apostles, chapter 1, 2, and 3, all the way to 5. You see the whole of the book of Acts of the Apostles, especially the beginning phase. You will see how the early church started to develop. You know, and today, people are looking away from these things. And we want to live our own life on our own without the meaningful kind of connection, without, you know, coming aboard into a destiny vehicle that God has created for you to be a part of, to be able to get to where God has in mind for you in life. Oh, I, I pray that God will give you a receptive heart today to this message because I believe somebody, your heart is going to open afresh to the love of God that is in Christ Jesus. You know, Romans 5 and verse 5, the Bible says, uh, uh, and hope does not disappoint because the love of God is shed abroad in our heart. And when you position very well, this month of February, you're going to be able to engage the love of God even through people that God has positioned around you in a new dimension. This is going to be pure love flowing from God to you. Uh, uh, be it through different people that God has positioned around you. That shall be your testimony in the precious name of Jesus. In Acts chapter 2, when you see, read from verse 1 there, the Bible says that when the day of Pentecost was fully come, you know, the, 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 there was something that happened there. They were all together in one place, in one accord. And what happened was that suddenly there came, uh, you know, a mighty sound from heaven as of a rushing wind, the scripture says, and it filled the place where they were. Look at verse 3. Uh, it says, Then there appeared to them divided tongues as of fire, and it sat upon each and every one of them, and they were all filled with the Holy Spirit, and began to speak with other tongues as the Spirit gave them utterance. Now, if, you, if, if I stop there, all you will know is that on the day of Pentecost, the advent of the early church, there was uh, a, a flow of the Spirit that resulted into them speaking in other tongues, speaking different languages. But it didn't stop there. Look at verse 5. The Bible says, and there were dwelling in, in the place Jews, devout men from every nation under heaven. And, you know, 
And when they heard the sound, when the sound occurred, the multitude came together and were confused. It started with confusion because everyone heard them speak in his own language. Look at verse 7. And they were all amazed and marveled, saying to one another, Look, are uh, not all these who speak Galileans? And how is it, verse 8, how is it that we hear each one uh, in our own language in which we were born? And decided to list all the different languages and, and tribes, Parthians, Medes, Elamites, and those dwelling in Mesopotamia, Judea, Cappadocia, Pontus, Asia, uh, Pr Pregia, and Pamphylia, Egypt, that's Africa, and the parts of Libya, that's also Africa. You know, uh, 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 John and Cyrene, visitors from Rome, that's Europe, uh, both Jews and proselytes, Cretans, Arabs from the, from the Middle East, you know, different people from everywhere. We hear them speaking in our own tongue or language, the works, the wonderful works of God, the wonderful works of God. So they were all amazed, perplexed, saying to one another, what could this mean? What could this mean? Now, this is where I'm going. The advent of the early church, we saw a flow of the Spirit of God breaking ethnic barriers and language barriers to create stronger connection. So, for, for me, for instance, as an African who speaks uh, my native mother tongue, Yoruba, and English, to be speaking flu fluent French or Spanish or German, with a German person will bring a stronger connection like never before. Let me give you an ex example of what I'm talking about. Well, I was um, studying for my postgrad in, 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 in Manchester Business School. One time I was in Manchester, uh, you know, in school, and uh, uh, I, I was walking on the high street, and I'd been in, you know, in school for a couple of weeks, and... Um, I, I hadn't been even seen people that I could easily converse with in my mother tongue. And on the high street, one day, I just heard somebody speaking on the phone and was speaking my, my, my you know, native tongue, uh, Yoruba, just speaking, you know, loudly and fluently and all that. I had to stop. I stopped and looked back. Who could this be? You know, in my heart, I was wishing it was somebody I knew. So we could greet very well, possibly hug. There was no COVID then, you know. So possibly hug each other and all that. I was happy to hear, you know, uh, you know, uh, uh, in, a, in, 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 a, in a different country, somebody speaking my language, my native language. That's how, uh, what the Holy Spirit did uh, at the advent of the early church. Broke ethnic barriers, broke language barriers, and attempted to bring people together. Today, when we talk about the infilling or the indwelling presence of the Holy Spirit in us, we think about just speaking in tongues for prayer or for prophecy. We don't think about the power of the Holy Spirit that is able to use us to speak other people's language, whether metaphorically or practically, to be able to connect with them so that we can do life with them. We think of people and put them in different compartments and boxes. This one is this tribe. This one is this person. Oh, this one is this. Oh, this one is a type of person. This one is a blue collar person. This one is a white collar person. Oh, this one is, you know, we use demographics, baby boomers or millennials or Gen Z or whatever. You know, when the Holy Spirit is walking through us and walking through this vehicle called the church, the faith community, it can give us the capacity and the grace to connect uh, across demographics, across economic demographics, age demographics, you know, social barriers, and just be able to connect with people and do life with them. Ladies and gentlemen, this is God's original intention. We are a kingdom of people powered by love to bring a kind of connection that can lead to a fulfilled life and a fulfilled destiny. Can somebody say after me, say I'm created for connection, not isolation. Can you say it one more time? Say I am created or I've been created for connection, not isolation. Say this season, I will not isolate. I will not separate myself. I will not lapse into loneliness. Uh, I will seek to connect, uh, whether virtually or physically. I will seek to connect uh, with people that God has positioned around me to do life with. 
in the precious name of Jesus. Somebody say it better, amen to that. Uh, come and say it better, say it better, amen. So God will use people to fulfill his agenda for your life. God will use people to fulfill his agenda for your life. Your ability to connect with people uh, will facilitate the work of God in your life. Your ability to connect with people will enhance the grace that God has put on your life. So lack of authentic connection will limit the blessings of God in my life and your life. It's as if God is limited sometimes uh, uh, by the connection that I'm open to and the connection that I'm not open to. The extent to which I want to open up myself to vital connections uh, may eventually limit you know, uh, uh, the divine intervention that I enjoy in life. All through the Bible, we see God using people, connecting people with people so that they can uh, make a headway in life. You know, uh, uh, in, uh, in 1 Kings 17, we see the story of, of Elijah uh, and, and the widow. Elijah had to connect with the widow. For Elijah to be sustained, the widow also needed Elijah so that what she had can multiply and then she will be sustained for a longer time until the, the famine was over. So we need each other. The prophet needed the widow. The widow needed the prophet. Who need each other? <laughs> Who is the one in most need? Well, that's a story for another day. But God used the, the prophet uh, uh, for the widow so that the widow can enjoy divine intervention. And through that divine intervention, the prophet too was sustained. That's how it works. Even within the faith community. We, we connect across board and enjoy the grace of God as we gain authentic connection. So lack of authentic connection will limit the blessing of God in your life. Yeah. The strength of your network is indicative of the possibilities for God to move in your life. Yeah. It's the strength of your network that is indicative of that. Let's, let, let, let me talk about something else. Yeah. The fact that connection is counterculture. So there are things uh, within our culture that want to stand against connection. And the, the, the voices are becoming louder. And especially if you live in a metropolitan city, if you're conversant you know, with social media and all that, a lot of these things will not be new to you. But they're seriously working against the plan of God to make his uh, church a faith-based community, a life-giving community where people can connect vitally to enjoy, uh, you know, the, 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 the destiny together. And in this month of February, we need to remember again God's original intention that it is not good that man should be alone. We need to remember, again, God's original intention. Uh, according to Ecclesiastes 4, and verse 9, down to 12, he said, two are better than one, for they, they, for, for, for they can help each other uh, to succeed. Each other succeed. That New Living Translation, two are better than one. He said, they can help each other succeed. He said, if one person falls, the other can reach out and help. But someone who falls alone is in real trouble. You will not fall alone this season <laughs> in the name of the Lord Jesus. He says, likewise, likewise, two people lying close together can keep each other warm. That talks about romantic kind of love. We'll get into that another day. But he said, but how can one be warm alone? A person standing alone can be attacked and defeated. And you will not be defeated this season. Because my God will give you the presence of mind to make the right connections. He said, a person standing alone can be attacked and defeated. Two can stand back to back, literally speaking, back to back, you know, facing all directions to see where the attack will come from. He said, can stand back to back and conquer. He said, three are even better. For a three a triple braided cord is not easily broken. Praise God. I said, praise God. So, connection is counterculture. What we see in our world today is that many people want to believe without belonging. How do I mean? Many people want to be Christians. They want to be followers of Christ. Or they want to be able to say, oh, I'm a Christian. I'm a child of God. But I just don't want to. 
have anything to do with other Christians. I don't want to be a part of a church. I don't want to, you know, all kinds of things that people are now glamorizing, you know, just glamorize it and make it look like a fad. The truth is that the early church, when you look at the early church, that connection, we see it in Acts of the Apostles chapter, uh, chapter 4, when you read uh, from verse 32 down to 37. Maybe I'll get into it somehow, uh, uh, but I'm conscious that uh, uh, I have a few more things to say before my time is up, and I needed to hear this very well. The Bible talks about them, you know, it, it says the multitude believe, uh, who believe were of one heart and one soul. One heart, one soul. That talks about connection. The multitude, the multitude who believe. How do you turn a multitude uh, to a faith-based community that is that vitally connected? One heart, one soul. Now that did anyone say that any of the things he possessed was his own. But they had all things in common. All things in common. One heart, one soul, all things in common. Can I ask you this question? The way you are living your life right now, would you say that you have communities, networks of friends, of family, where you have heart to heart, soul, I mean one soul, one heart, one soul connection, that you can share things in common, and you know, and all that. Because that's God's original intention, and that's why the church exists. The church is not existing for the pastors. For the pastors to be wealthy or to fear well. The church is not existing for the church leaders to just use the authority anyhow and use up it over other people. The church is not existing only for uh, the rich or uh, the people who are still upcoming, the young or the old. The church exists for all of us. It is God's family on earth to create this family where we can all have the right kind of connection. But to say, I want to believe, but I don't want to belong. You are, uh, you, you know, you, 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 you're not going to do justice uh, to your new life in Christ Jesus. So, a few things that I want to say about the, 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 the fact that connection is counterculture. And, and a lot of Christians are struggling with the fact that Christianity itself is counterculture. We want to blend. We want to, we want to live like any other person. We don't want to create, we don't want to upset anything. But yet, when Christ lived on the earth, he upset many things. In fact, the, the description in Ephesians chapter 1, when you read from verse 20 down to 23 in the message translation, Ephesians 1, 20 to 23 in the message translation is very instructive. The writer of uh, Ephesians, the Apostle Paul, in this message translation, uh, the way the message renders it is very interesting. In Ephesians chapter 1, verse 20, he said, All this energy issues from Christ. God raised him from the dead and set him on a throne in deep heaven in charge of running the universe, everything from galaxies to government. So no name, no power exempt from his rule. Talking about Christ. And, and not just for the time being, but forever. He is in charge of it all as the final word on everything. At the center of all this, Christ rules the church. Look at this. The church, you see, is not peripheral to the world. The world is peripheral to the church. The church is Christ's body in which he speaks and acts, by which he fills everything with his presence. I love uh, that verse 23 that says that the church, you see, is not peripheral to the world, but the world is peripheral to the church. So we're not supposed to take our cue from the world. We're supposed to take our cue. The world is supposed to take our cue from the church. When the world, Jesus said, uh, when the men see your connection and your good works, they will glorify your Father in heaven. When they see the way you love one another, can I appeal to someone today that God wants to power you by his love? God wants you to, to live a life that is powered by love. I'm not talking about love, I mean, uh, of, of that, that is just so physical. Love of perfume, of flower, that's good. Love of giving gift, that's good. But it doesn't stop there. It is the love that is shed abroad in our heart by the Holy Spirit. Unconditional, yet simple. 
unconditional, not compromising, but yet very connecting. Very, uh, you know, a so to so, heart to heart. That's what God is craving for this season. That's what commands his power over his church like never before. That's why how you will see the, the power of God in your family, in your business like never before when the love of God is flowing freely. The love of God uh, does not allow for pride. It, it, you know, it, 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 it promotes humility, equality. It promotes justice. That's what the love of God promotes. When we have that in our cities, in our nations, we will see the power of God in manifestation much more. Say amen, somebody. Glory be to Jesus. And we Christians and the church, the faith community, we are the ones that are supposed to exemplify this to our cities, to our nations, to our communities, to our families. So that they will see that Christ is ruling in our heart. It's not by the size of your Bible, neither the, the, the loudness of your tongue when you pray in the spirit. No. Or how long you pray. Those things are okay. We've all fasted in this in the last month of January. And some churches are even still fasting right now. But it's not about the length of our fast. It's about the, 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 you know, the strength of our connection with other people. And how we show the love of Christ. And I'm praying for you this season. That the love of God truly will be shed abroad in your heart. Afresh in the name of Jesus. But when we look into our world today. The things that stand you know, counter to connection. The commoditization of the faith. Seeking to receive from God without connecting with his children. Many people just want breakthroughs today. I want my healing and I want it now. Yeah, but when, I don't care about connecting with other people and live, showing love and living a life of love. No, God just bless me. Yeah, take this sickness away. Give me money. You know, just, just break something or bring something new in my life. That's what most people are focused on. We no longer love our neighbor as ourselves. But yet we want the power of God to still be at work in our lives. The commoditization of the gospel or of faith is ruining God's original intention. Focusing only on self. Salt cannot salt itself. So believers focusing only on getting uh, the, the word and miracles for themselves without belonging or connecting with other believers is not God's original intention. Uh, COVID has accelerated our capacity to generate content online. Many people right now, you are, you are at home, you are online, you can join as many churches as you like, you can listen to some of the best preachers in the world, so everything is available to you. But is that the end of the faith community? Is that the only thing God wants just for you to eat and eat the world and get miracles? What about other people? What about the unrich people in the world? What about uh, how we're going to turn our city around, our community around? What about how your industry is going to be turned around through the demonstration of the love of God and building faith-based networks? Knowing that we are created for connection, not isolation. We may be locked down, but we are not supposed to, uh, you know, be lonely or lack connections. Many things happen virtually today. People play games with each other from all across the world. Gamers know what I'm talking about. Yeah. People, uh, cyclists connect. Psychology, you know, that's the, the, the name of some of the group. They connect from all around the world. They have their halves. Then what happened to us in church? That because maybe we're not, not missing, meeting physically in certain cities or certain nations, people are beginning to disconnect and thinking only of themselves. God wants us to restore his original intention. And, and you know, uh, 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 evil is, is, is thriving because there are many more networks where people discuss how they're going to perpetuate evil. I wish we have many more networks, whether on Facebook, or other social networks where people are actually connecting uh, for the greater goods of the kingdom of God, connecting because they want to affect their community, connecting because they want to win souls, connecting because they want to, re you know, restore marriages, connecting because they want to create content that will raise godly seed, godly children, connecting because they want to make, you know, clean money uh, that, will, uh, that will bless humanity and preach the gospel. Glory be to Jesus. Uh, I pray for you today that my God will bring you to the right connections this season. Whatever discourages godly connection, it will not be able to come into your own life in the name of the Lord Jesus. So the, the strategic campaign 
is to discourage people from being a part of a life-giving church or organized faith community. So you see people today who will be saying, you know, I, I, I don't like to go to church again. Yeah, I don't do church. I don't do church. You know, I don't do church. <laughs> I don't do church. Many people are saying that. I don't do church. You know, it's like, it's like telling God, uh, I, I, I love you, but I don't love you. I hate your children. Yeah, I love you, but I hate your children. I love Christ, but I don't like Christians. And that's, that, that's the lie that the devil has sold for too long. And this is the time for us to break it down and say, no, we are the body of Christ. We are his family. We don't only love Christ, we love his family as well. Say amen, somebody. Another thing that is you know, standing against authentic connections today in the body of Christ and in, in, the, in our faith communities is secular humanism. Secular humanism. It says that human beings can, human beings can live ethical and fulfilling lives without religious beliefs. Yeah. Without religious beliefs. And it's, it's, it's really, you know, working because many people just believe you don't need God. You don't need uh, uh, to be a part of any religious belief or any faith community. Just live your own life. And there are many Christians who are gradually believing some part of the philosophies of, 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 of humanists or secular humanists. Uh, they, 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 they want to live their life by that. They want to pick and choose. You know, I know that many dangerous things have happened within the church. The truth is that wherever human beings gather, we'll have incidences. We'll have all kinds of things happen. But it's not good enough an excuse for us to insist that God's original intention for us as Christians and for his church will not be achieved. Uh, let me quickly start to wrap this all up, uh, gradually. Uh, there's a, a prerequisite for meaningful connection, and it borders on why we do what we do. So an understanding, you know, of these following things will lead to a beautiful and meaningful connection. One is the dynamics of the community, of the church, or the faith community. And I'm talking about how we operate and what, you know, we stand for. Our shared values, for instance. For us at the Elevation Church, our shared values we call Ashley. The acronym Ashley, which is accountability. A for accountability. S for service. Uh, H for humility. L for love. I for integrity. And E for excellence. Ashley. That's, that's, that's our shared value as a church. We expect that everyone that will be a part of this faith community, as we network, as we connect, we will demonstrate accountability, service, humility, love, integrity, and excellence in all of our dealings. And with that, uh, we will have a, a, a better faith community that we all will be proud of. Secondly, chemistry of the community. You know, the chemistry of, of the community. How do I mean? How we connect what binds us together? What really binds us together is love. It's not ethnicity. It's not nationality. It's not demography. It's really love. So we can love across demographic strata. Yeah, that's, that, that's what binds us together. Thirdly, is the DNA of, 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 of the community or group. And our DNA is what is unique about our mission. Yeah. About our mission. Our mission as a church is to make greatness common. We believe in every man and every woman is the seed of greatness that God has planted. We seek to create a conducive environment for greatness to evolve through everyone that God will send into our midst. Whether physical gathering or virtual gathering, online church or physical church, greatness must evolve in everyone that God will send into our midst. Now, <laughs> let's look at the the intentional engagement in community are the fact that it's a key to healthy spiritual formation. So the, the, the divine mandate for meaningful connection, the divine mandate for meaningful connection, one is that God wants us to mature, to mature in meaningful connections. Many people don't know the difference between, you know, sitting in rows like in an auditorium in the, in the church, but just being plugging in virtually from different corners of the world, it's different when you sit around the table 
whether on a Zoom call, on a physical gathering, in a room, and we're all sitting around the table, we can exchange ideas, we can connect more vitally. That's why at the Elevation Church, we have been emphasizing the need for everyone to join a, 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 a small group, a life-giving small group, based on your interests or your purpose in life. A small group that can help you, uh, you know, to tag along with other people and grow in your faith, grow in your skill, and grow in your knowledge. Unity commands God's presence and grace. I spoke about that at the beginning. When you read Psalm 133, it says, wherever there's unity, the power of God and providential grace is made available. It's like the uh, empowering anointing oil that is poured upon the head of Aaron that flows down his bed, even down to his care. That's what the scripture says. Unity promotes the demonstration of the nature of God. Yeah, the nature of God, which is, uh, uh, how do I put it? Which is, which, which is, which is love. It demonstrates the God kind of love. That's what unity does. The nature of God. And I, I want to demonstrate this, this nature of God uh, that unity brings uh, through the scripture, Galatians chapter 6, Galatians chapter 6, verse 2. Yeah. Uh, uh, it, 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 yeah, it talks about bear one another's burdens and so fulfill the law of Christ. Bear one another's burden. This is what should happen in a faith network, in a faith connection, in a church, in a small group. It says, bear one another's burden and so fulfill the law of Christ. And then, uh, look at verse 3. It talks about you know, not being proud. It said, for if anyone thinks himself to be something which is not, he deceives himself. But let each one examine his own work. And then he will have rejoicing in himself alone and not in another. He said, for each one shall bear his own load. So in verse 5, it talks about load. In verse 2, it talks about the body. He said we should bear one another's body. But each one would bear his own load. I love to demonstrate this like this. I, I, I wanted to look at this. You know, in, in, in this place, I have, you know, uh, um, different weights. Different weights, you know. I have different weights. In this different weight, uh, you, you, this is what somebody, for instance, may be carrying. Uh, this is a 3 kg weight, which may be maybe family issue. This is another 1.5 kg weight, which may be uh, maybe sickness within the family. Uh, this is another weight that somebody is carrying, which may be something that has to do with the academics or career, uh, and so on and so forth. And in the midst of all that, you see something like a brick that is common to everyone. You know, this is common to everyone. Uh, something that all of us deal with. Maybe a recession. Maybe COVID-19. Maybe, uh, <laughs> maybe uh, uh, weather. You know, ash weather uh, for people in the temperate region of the world. So somebody has all this to deal with. When you get into a thriving faith community, the God's original uh, uh, intention is that there will be vital connections that will help you to lighten your load. Simi, can you come? Uh, 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 and, and uh, you know, for, for this demonstration, I want you to assume that this is someone, she has a load. That she's carrying and then she has these other weights that she needs to carry and you know uh as she she she, she carries it she can't even carry it well let alone run with it and in life we're supposed to be able to run you know with with what we're carrying with everything we're carrying we're still expected to run and and you know and and move but what happens a lot of the time is that many people struggle emotional baggage emotional you know burden Yet she has her own load that is behind her. Some things, but when, when you get into a faith community, what you see is that there, there's somebody who is, you know, uh, strong enough to say, can I pick some of your load and help you with it? Can I pick some of your load and help you with it? You know, can I, can I do this with you? Can I help with this? You know, so somebody else will come again and say, oh, I can also help with that. I, 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 can, I, can, I can pick some of this load uh, for you. And before you know it, uh, the, 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 the burden has, it becomes very light. And together, we can do life together. We, you know, we, 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 we can walk not alone, but together. That, that's, that's, that's the goodness of, of faith community. 
And that's what God is calling you and I into. That's what God is calling you and I into. Glory be to Jesus. And uh, the every measure of help and divine assistance that you need for destiny will not elude you this season. In the name of the Lord Jesus. In conclusion today, I want to sound a note of caution. Caution. Uh, that in connect connection should not limit uh, 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 caution in connection should not limit the blessedness of connection. Many people will say, oh, in, metro, in the metro place, you meet all kinds of people in church or in small groups, so you want to be careful. Yes, you should be careful. So in the midst of connection, uh, there must be caution, but caution should not limit us from enjoying the blessedness of divine connection. You know, in overall, connection is better than isolation. So therefore, make deliberate effort to connect and belong. It's time to belong. It's time to connect. It's time to belong online, you know, virtually. It's time to belong physically. COVID has come to change the way we do many things, but it will not stop us from belonging. It will not stop us from the vital connections that God wants to bring into your life. So someone, as you go into this week, I want you to understand. God will open your eyes to vital connections. If you're within our church community, we want you to be a part of the small group. Yeah. God is already setting that up. And there are great people that you will meet there. And you must understand, not everyone will be your friend, but everyone should be your family. You are not going to like everyone, but God expects you to love everyone because we are powered by love. And this is all about him. It's all about Jesus. It's not about us. It's about God's original intention. Glory be to Jesus. And I pray for everyone today that the God who has called us into his family, he will reveal himself to you afresh. He will bring you into new connections this season. For anyone who may be suffering from every kind of loneliness, I break the hold of loneliness in your life. In the name of Jesus, I pray today that the hand of God comes upon you the Bible says it's the one that puts the solitaries in family. This season, you will get into the right group, into the right network, into the right church, into the right network. In the name of the Lord Jesus, for us at the Elevation Church, our arms are wide open, our doors are open virtually and in in-person. We believe that there's grace upon our church to bring people into the right connections with which they will do destiny, fulfill their destiny, and serve Christ with their life and serve humanity. As we, uh, as we worship together, as we bring this to a close, I want you to trust God to lead you and guide you into meaningful connection. And somebody today may be saying, Lord, heal my heart from bad connections. The pain of the past, the bitterness of the past, cause me to believe again. Uh, cause me uh, uh, to open my heart to you for your love to, 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 to be released afresh. It's all about Jesus and it's all about him in our life. I love that song, by Israel, a new breed that says, uh, from you know, uh, 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 it, it's all about Him, uh, 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 it's all about Jesus. Uh, Jesus, be the center of my life, be the center of our church. If you don't mind, can you lift your two hands together as Bissola will lead us in that song uh, and let's just sing it together once or twice as, as we pray together Jesus today? The lift your two hands to Jesus, lift your two hands to Jesus. Father, we thank you. Jesus at the center of it all. Yes, Jesus. From beginning to the end, it will always be, it's always been you, Jesus. Jesus. Jesus, be the center of your child. Yes, Jesus, be the center of your church. Jesus, be the center of your church. And every knee will bow, and every tongue shall confess you, Jesus. Yes. Jesus, nothing else matters. Yes, Jesus. Nothing in this world will do. Oh, oh, cause Jesus, you're the center. Everything revolves around.
your two hands to him everywhere from my heart to the heavens Jesus be the center it's all about you yes it's all about you lift your two hands to him and worship father we thank you let it be all about you be the center of our family be the center of our church be the center of every enterprise be the center of every endeavor in the name of the Lord Jesus. Make us kingdom minded. Make us connection minded. Let your, uh, your love be shed abroad in our heart this season. As the world we celebrate kind of love and mundane things. Lord, help us to think about eternity and think about your original intention for your church, for our families, for our communities. Out of this gathering today, raise men and women who will foster greater connection uh, for the greater good of our world and for your kingdom on earth in the name of the Lord Jesus. We pray today for anyone who may be shut in, anyone who may be isolated, anyone who may be lonely this season, anyone who may be looking for help without no one to help. We pray that as we go into the month of February, Lord, even within this teaching series, cause solitaries uh, to find themselves in families by divine orchestration. Raise families for people. Raise divine connections for people that will lead into mega help for destiny fulfillment. We declare that no one will remain stranded again in the name of the Lord Jesus. Father, we thank you. Thank you for people that will bring healing to other people, for people that will bring resources into other people's life, for love, joy, and peace flowing freely within our faith community. We thank you, everlasting Father. Thank you for new relationships. Thank you for new connections. Thank you for new networks that will foster uh, the fulfillment of your will in our lives. We give you all the glory in the name of the Lord Jesus. And somebody say, believe in amen today. All right, before we bring the service to a close, can I pray for anyone who may be saying, PG, I don't have the love of Christ in my heart. I want to be able to give this love, but I don't have it. I, I, can't, I can't really say that I'm a child of God. I've been separated. Uh, you know, I, I'm, I'm seriously separated from God. I'm not in fellowship with Jehovah. Can I pray for you today? I pray for you that God will come into your life. Somebody may say, I've, I've said a prayer before, asking God to forgive me my sin, but I backslid into sin. I'd love to pray for you too. You can rededicate your life to Christ right now. But whatever platform you're watching from, whether on TV or any of our social uh, media platforms, can, can I ask that you say this prayer with me and then we'll have, uh, you can go into uh, the, the chat se se you know, se se sections of, of the platform or if it's on TV, you see the number that you can send a WhatsApp to or the email that you, 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 can, you can reach us through and just let us know that you're making a decision today. Will you put your hand on your heart and say this after me? Say, Lord Jesus. I come to you today. I acknowledge that I'm a sinner. Forgive me my sins. Cleanse me from every unrighteousness. Say, I invite you to be my Lord and my Savior. I give you permission to rule and reign in my life from this moment forward. Thank you, Jesus, for accepting me just the way I am. In Jesus' name. Let me pray for you. Father, I pray for everyone making a decision today. I ask that you start a new work in their life. Let the, the yoke of the devil be destroyed. Let burdens be lifted from their life and their heart. Rescue someone from loneliness and depression. Heal their bodies. And Holy Spirit, start a new walk in their life from this moment. Fill their heart with your grace. And empower them to live the rest of their lives for you. In Jesus' precious name, amen. So if you just said a prayer with me, like I said, let us know that you just rededicated your life to Christ or that you just gave your life to Christ. Just go into the chat room and just, 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 you see a link there that you can click on and you can drop your details with us. We'd love to connect with you as a responsible church. We want to help you uh, to become a stronger Christian and a stronger believer, the one that Christ will be proud of. And if you're watching on TV, like I said, just, just get in there. You, you'll see uh, the number with which you can reach us, maybe WhatsApp or text message 
and also the email address with which you can reach us. God bless you for the decision you have made today. And I pray that the hand of God will continually rest upon you in the name of the Lord Jesus. Uh, now, again, before we bring the service to a close, I want you to understand that this season is very crucial for us at the Elevation Church. Uh, we have a, 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 a presentation uh, that you, you need to listen to, which is about uh, the, the year 2021 and the commitments that we believe that God will have you to make to your church. We're going to give you some information about uh, what has happened in 2020 and what we're looking up to in 2021 and how you can be a part of that. Uh, even if you're still watch, worshiping with us virtually, we believe that God wants to use you. He wants to use your family. He wants to use your business. He wants to use your resources for the furtherance of the gospel and for the building up of the kingdom of God. So I, I want you to stay with us because you, you, you will be able to participate in that presentation very, very shortly, just for a few minutes. And before that, uh, uh, I want you to uh, give to God today. Our worship is never complete until we have worshiped God with our substance. Now, at the Elevation Church, we, we, we love to worship God with our substance. We are givers. We, we, we give God a percentage of our income in tithing, with celebrating, with special seeds, and all kinds of giving for the furtherance of his kingdom. Uh, there are many ways we give, and it's been displayed on the screen. I want you to, uh, if you don't mind, right now, uh, it's time to give electronically. If you're local to Nigeria, you can give through any of this uh, giving platform, USSD code or, or, or wire transfers through the three banks that's been displayed. If you are uh, international or you, you don't live in Nigeria and you want to give and be a part of people who make greatness common and who make ministry happen at the Elevation Church, uh, please go to our online, secured online giving platform, elevationng.org forward slash giving. You can use any of your card to give. Uh, 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 and if you try and it looks like it fails, there are many options on that platform which, which you, can, you can give uh, uh, to us. And then also, uh, you can do a wire transfer through the GC Bank uh, wire transfer details that you have on the right-hand side of your screen. As you worship God with your substance today, I pray that the hand of God comes upon your finances, that His grace rests upon your life, that the one who sees in secret will reward you openly, that every seed that you sow uh, will attract a mega harvest of things that money can buy and things that money cannot buy. So this new month, enjoy the favor of God, the grace of God, the mercy of God, uh, all that steps into the place of profiting. In the name of Jesus, may your decisions be accurate. May the hand of God guide you and protect you and your household in the name of the Lord Jesus. Uh, somebody say, believe in amen. So thank you for giving to the Lord. Thank you for worshiping God with your substance with us today. Also, uh, before we go, I'd love to quickly uh, uh, give you one or two announcements. One is that we are now counting down uh, to the Exponential Conference. Uh, just in about two weeks, we will be having our annual uh, Pastors and Church Leaders Conference, Exponential Conference, uh, from the 20, Monday 22nd and Tuesday 23rd of this month of February. It's an online experience that will start at 9 a.m. Uh, every day. And uh, like it's been announced, the theme uh, for this year's event is the Resilient Church. Resilient Church. And uh, speaking alongside with my wife and I is my pastor, uh, Pastor Sam Adeyemi, and uh, uh, my, uh, also my, past, my, my, my mentor uh, uh, from the UK, the pastor of Jesus House London, Pastor Agwe Ruku, will also be speaking um, uh, a senior friend, Mr. Leke Order, uh, the principal of Order Consulting, will also be speaking uh, because the matter we're dealing with right now transcends just uh, uh, the church. It, it, it's how we're going to uh, be able to lead the people of God in the new normal and still, you know, shining the light of Christ uh, with unco uncompromising and unwavering faith, uh, winning the lost, maturing the saints, and building the frontiers of the kingdom of God. My friends, uh, Yemi Davids, uh, Jerry Aze, and uh, Dr. Conway Edwards, they also will be speaking alongside uh, with my wife and I this year's Exponential with many other breakout speakers, breakout session speakers. Uh, it promises to be a powerful and fantastic one. Please uh, encourage somebody to register, speak to a pastor friend, a minister friend, a church leader friend, invite them from all over the world. Let them register and be a part of this wonderful experience. Already we have registrations from about 50 countries already. Yeah, that's very powerful. 50 countries already. We have registration. Our registration has gone beyond the 7,000 mark already. Uh, we're, we're, we're pushing it beyond the 10,000 mark this week. And it's uh, more than 50 countries 
already that we've had registration. So uh, get in touch with somebody, get them to register. Uh, lastly today, uh, be a part of a small group at the Elevation Church. And you can do that by sending an email to smallgroups at elevationng.org or just get on our website and you'll see a portal there with which you can fill a form uh, to register to be a part of a small group. Uh, join our online community by simply you know, just visiting onlinechurch.elevationng.org. You can know how to join our online community. You can engage with us, get counsel, uh, send us your prayer requests, make friends even through the online community. Online church. Uh, dot elevation ng dot org is the place to be uh, join us there and you'll be able to make meaningful connections and don't forget subscribe to our youtube channel so that you can get notifications as we load up wonderful materials that will build your faith this season god is set to transform your life and make you that uh apostle of love that person that will transform other people's lives and that's how we make greatness common uh, please stay tuned uh, for other, the other presentation, and I look forward to having you back on our platform for subsequent services. God bless you, and have a great week. Hi, I hope you're faring well uh, this season. As a church, we're on a mission, and that is to make greatness common. In fulfillment of our mission, we have prayerfully and strategically served our community through various intervention and social impact activities. Here are a few of such uh, from last year. We were able to provide about 6,000 households with food bags during uh, the pandemic lockdown as part of our food bank and medical intervention project run by our social intervention arm, the Pistis Foundation. We have reached over 24,000 individuals across the city of Lagos in this process. We've also donated supplies and relief materials to children and individuals in the Greater Toronto area in Ontario, Canada, through our local expression, uh, Elevate Community Church. And uh, about 50 women entrepreneurs receive micro grants from our Women Empowerment Project run by our women's ministry, The Jewels. In addition to all this, we moved a lot of our sermons and ministry touch points online and on TV stations. Uh, we are currently running broadcasts on five stations, both terrestrial and cable, as well as a live streaming and on-demand content across various social media platforms. From the onset of the pandemic, God has given us a more global platform and influence as a church. We now have people identifying with our church as members from different cities in Nigeria and different countries of the world. This year, God has given us a specific word and it's greater. And in line with his word, he has also implanted in our hearts ministry initiatives that will enable us to make greater impact on the world around us. Here is a snippet of what is coming up. We have different kinds of empowerment initiatives for our members, which spans across career, business, emotional wellness. You know, we want to help people to build capacity for the opportunities that God will bring into their lives in 2021. Through our social intervention uh, initiative, uh, Pieces Foundation, we are going to be having loads of health intervention uh, events like the Obumi uh, Medical Outreach, and with that, we're going to be reaching thousands of people in the year 2021. We are also jump-starting uh, a, a homeless shelter for kids, which we call Kids Out of the Street, uh, COTS we call it. And that will be starting in the second quarter of 2021. We hope to be able to take a few kids in from the streets of Lagos. We will be having uh, a drive for real estate acquisition for some of our uh, expressions, especially our Greater Lekki Church, uh, which is growing by the day, running uh, three services currently, gathering thousands of people every weekend. We will also be planting new churches in 2021, uh, specifically in the city of London in England and uh, across uh, the city of Lagos and other cities in Nigeria. We are revamping our digital platforms for greater effectiveness in ministry 
So we're starting a digital TV, uh, we're, we're launching a prayer app, and uh, we're launching the Pistis Technology Hub, which will afford us the opportunity of creating technology solutions for church ministry and parachurch ministries around the world. We will be pushing the frontiers of the kingdom through uh, more TV stations, of which will happen in the year 2021, uh, more terrestrial TV, more cable TV stations as we get into the year. We want to create an opportunity for the gospel to spread wider in 2021. Also, our local ministry initiatives, our prison outreach ministry, our outreach ministry uh, to the less privileged that we call Elevate 200, and different specialized events we'll be holding in 2021. To mention a few, we have the Exponential Conference for pastors and church leaders, uh, which attracts people from different countries and different states in our, our nation, Nigeria. And also by mid-year, our Accelerate Conference, which will gear you up to face the challenges of the second half of the year and prepare you with emotional fortitude and spiritual strength. I hope you're looking forward to that. These are some of the events that will happen in 2021. We will also uh, be stretching ourselves to influence our culture through hearts and entertainment. So we are starting the Pistis uh, Creative Academy and a record label for our music ministry. And all this will involve a lot of stretching uh, for us, both in terms of manpower and financially. I invite you to partner with us to actualize these ministry initiatives by giving towards the execution of all these projects. I'd love to read uh, uh, just two verses of the scripture to help you uh, properly internalize uh, what this giving initiative is all about. In 2 Corinthians chapter 9, when you read from, uh, from, from verse 7 uh, in the New Living Translation, the Bible says, you must each decide in your heart how much to give and don't give reluctantly or in response to pressure for god loves a person who gives cheerfully verse 8 says and god will generously provide all you need then you will always have everything you need and plenty left over to share with others I pray that that will be your testimony in 2021 in Jesus' precious name. So for your convenience, we have created a form on our website for you to indicate your interest uh, at supporting uh, any of these initiatives and giving over and above your tithes and offerings in the year 2021. Now, if you've not been giving regularly your tithes and offerings, can I seize this opportunity to remind you and to ask you again to recommit to God through the ministry of the Elevation Church in this new year by giving regularly. And if you have been giving, we ask that beyond your tithe and offering, that you stretch to make room uh, for us to do what God has put in our hearts to do in 2021 by giving over and above your regular giving or deciding to support a specific initiative and give cheerfully from your heart as God will prompt you. So to do that effectively, I'd love to invite you to visit our website, elevationng.org forward slash partnerships. Can I repeat that one more time? Uh, elevationng.org forward slash partnerships. And you will be able to indicate your interest and get more instructions on how to give. I look forward to partnering with you to fulfill God's greater mandate on us this year. God bless you. Hi there. Are you looking for a place to connect, to nurture and be nurtured? A platform you can share your interests, faith and to learn from others? Somewhere you can network and increase in influence, get some pastoral care and ever need to hone and deploy your gifts? Then we've got it. All you need is to join a connect group at the Elevation Church. Now here's how to sign up for one. Simply visit connectgroup.elevationng.org, click on the register button, impute your email address, name and phone number, and submit. An activation page will open up. Type in the activation code you would have received by email and click continue. 
set your preferred password and click continue. You'd get a successful registration message on the screen. You can now proceed to login. Once logged in, you see drop down boxes on the page. Select your preferred expression, interest, group, meeting day and meeting type from each box respectively. Click apply filter to see the groups relevant to your search. Select one that suits your interest or needs best and click join and that's it. There are groups for singles, couples, engaged couples, fashion, advocacy and governance, Bible study, travel, unique families, professional exam support groups, creative arts, investment, entertainment, gaming, fitness, I mean the list is endless. This way, you can find your tribe and flourish with like minds whilst growing in your vocation and spiritual life. If you can't find your preferred group, simply email smallgroups at elevationng.org and we'll sort you out. Please note that you don't have to be a member of the Elevation Church to join a connect group. Connect group meetings will hold virtually either on WhatsApp, Telegram, Zoom or Microsoft Teams. We all need great support systems to prop one another up, cheer ourselves up, do great things, and achieve all that God has called us to do. So sign up now and invite your friends, colleagues, and family members. We can't wait to have you on board. Let's build stronger communities together. Wow. That was indeed a great time at service today. Please subscribe to and follow us on our various social media channels so that you can get alerts and updates about our upcoming events. Please subscribe to and follow us on our various social media channels so that you can get alerts and updates about our upcoming events. This season, we are calling you to come aboard. Let's do life together. Start inviting everyone you know to be a part of all our events and activities lined up for the rest of the month. Our Christian Maturity courses started last week. To join the following courses, Understanding the Ministry of the Holy Spirit, The Fundamentals of a Constant Devotional Life, Cultivating Unwavering Faith, Understanding Spiritual Warfare, Strengthening Your Prayer Altar, and Contagious Christianity, simply visit elevationng.org forward slash courses for more information and registration. Our tech workforce training courses for the month started yesterday. Please note that all classes hold online at 8 a.m. prompts on Saturdays only. We guarantee that during the training, you would learn to identify your spiritual gifts and areas of strength. Other things to learn will be the importance of service behavior, communication skills, and the tech structure and value. Kindly use the following links showing to register and stay up to date. Please note that the second batch of our Tech Eye classes will hold on Saturdays the 20th and 27th of February. Please register using the link for your respective levels. The Exponential Conference for Pastors and Leaders holds this month on Monday 22nd and Tuesday 23rd February online at 9am prompt. We are riding on the theme The Resilient Church and our great lineup of speakers are ready to share, encourage and inspire you for the journey ahead. Attendance is absolutely free, but you have to register to attend via exponentialng.org forward slash register. Visit our resource centers for messages from various teaching series, books by our lead pastor, branded greater t-shirts, 10th anniversary t-shirts, hoodies and mp3s from our just concluded business and economic outlook events Vantage Forum. You can also order online by visiting elevationng.org forward slash resources. Hurry now before they run out of stock. Join our regular online prayers Mondays to Saturdays at 6 a.m. only on Zoom and MixLR. We encourage you to keep inviting more people and sharing your testimonies as they come. Our counseling team is ready to help you with any decision or bold move you might have to make. You can contact them through any of the numbers now showing on the screen or send an email to counseling at elevationng.org. Join our midweek event switch this Wednesday online on our various social media platforms by 6.30 p.m. Share the link with your family and friends and also ask them to join too. We are here if you need to reach us at any time during the week. You can send an email to info at elevationng.org or simply place a call to 0700 Elevate. That's 0700-353-8283. God has greater things in store for you this season. Receive them and have an awesome week.
God bless you.